Caitlyn Jenner, whom I've met, wonderful person, Caitlyn Jenner was voted Woman of the Year. Her first year as a woman. Ain't that something? Beat every bitch in Detroit, she's better than all of you. Never even had a period, ain't that something? Oh, I'd be mad as shit if I was a woman. I'd be mad if I was me. If I was in a BET Awards sitting there and they're like, and the winner for nigger of the year, Eminem, my man. And I found these notebooks and I started going through the notebooks and it was all this wonderful poetry in them. Written as his handwriting. I didn't even know this nigga wrote poems. And then I looked through his drawers and I opened up his middle drawer and I found his rolling paper. <laughs> and I looked down at them papers like, oh, that's where that poetry's coming from. <laughs> and that shit broke my heart. I mean, I smoke weed, but I mourned my son's innocence. And I cried a little bit. And I took his papers upstairs to my room. <laughs> Rolled some weed that I'd hid from the family. And I got really high. And then I got paranoid. So I put his papers back how I found them. <laughs> but let me qualify the statement. I, I am what's known on the streets as a victim blamer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Somebody come up to me like, Dave. Hey, Chris Brown just beat up Rihanna. I'll be like, well, what did she do? <laughs> Dave, Michael Jackson was molesting children. Well, what were those kids wearing at the time? <laughs> I don't think he did it. But you know what? Even if he did do it, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? I mean, it's Michael Jackson. I know more than half the people in this room have been molested in their lives. But it wasn't no goddamn Michael Jackson, was it? You know, America has a racial hot seat. I think we can all agree that that's the truth. And we can also agree that that hot seat is traditionally occupied by African Americans in general, African American men in particular. Although I can see that in recent years, that seat has been occupied by, by Mexicans, and I dare say Arabs. And we, the black Americans, would like to thank you both for your sacrifice and your struggle. <laughs> we needed a break. We needed a goddamn break. We all go through something, but at least I can leave my backpack someplace. If you Arab and forget to backpack, you got about 20 minutes before they send that robot to blow your shit up. <laughs> then I thought of an idea for a children's book. The book is designed to help parents teach their children about racism, which, if you're a parent, you know is an impossible concept to teach to a child. The book is about a big, strong, beautiful black man with a benign, regular-ass white name and he has a white speaking voice. Whenever this motherfucker calls to get a reservation at a restaurant, oh, he gets the reservation. That name and that voice, who could resist him? Now, I should tell you, this black man is literally an actual giant. He's a strong dude. And when he shows up to them restaurants, they see that big, giant black dude, they say, you can't come in here. And, and, and they call the police. And, and in every installment of the book, the police come and, and they always shoot him. But remember, no, no, remember, this guy is a giant. These bullets don't kill him. They don't even hurt him. They just break his heart. <laughs> it's called Clifford the Big Black Nigger. All our stars, all our stars, man. Our Kelly pissed on his victim. <laughs> I know, it was rough. But I mean, again, 
I can't even judge R. Kelly. First of all, we don't know if these allegations are true or not, and even if they are true, if you want to know how I feel about it honestly, if a man cannot pee on his fans, I don't want to be in show business anymore because, well, that's why I got in the game, baby. I got dreams too. You guys are confusing the issue. Why you guys are busy worrying about if R. Kelly even peed on this girl or not? You're not asking yourself the real question that America needs to decide once and for all. And that question is, how old is 15 really? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. That's a good question. I'm not saying that a person is as smart as they're gonna be at 15. That's not what I'm saying, man. But I am saying 15 to me it's old enough to decide whether or not you want to be pissed on. I mean, that's me. If you can't make a decision like that by the time you're 15, then just give up, motherfucker, because life is way harder than that. I make tougher decisions all the time. If you don't want to get pissed on, just get the fuck out of the way. It's not even a decision. If I start peeing on the front row, they're not going to have to calculate and think, oh, how do I feel about this? Am I okay with it? They just move. You can do that at 15. I, I could have. I've been 15. When I was 15, I was doing stand-up in nightclubs. I smoked reefer from time to time. Friends were selling crack. I was trying to finger fuck people. I knew what was happening around me to some degree. Getting pissed on was the least of my worries at 15. Trust me. But it keeps coming up. It's a lot of confusion around that age. Anytime 15 comes up, people freak out. Like when that girl Elizabeth Smart got kidnapped. Right? Remember in Utah last year, 15-year-old girl Elizabeth Smart was kidnapped, and then they finally found her, and the whole country was relieved. And I was the only one saying, damn, she wasn't that smart after all. <laughs> not because she got kidnapped. That could happen to anybody. I'm not knocking her for that. I'm just saying, if you kidnapped me when I was 15, you got to take me further than eight miles away from my house, man. God damn. <laughs> you can't hold me prisoner around shit I recognize. I'll break away. I'll, I'll break away. <laughs> Fuck off me, nigga, that's my bus stop. I know where I'm at. I'm going home. She was missing for six months, eight miles away from my house. That's two exits, man, that's nothing. And while she was missing during this half a year that this girl is missing, there's a seven-year-old black girl who gets kidnapped in Philadelphia. Nobody knows her name. They might have talked about her two or three times on the news, but she should have been the top story because she chewed through the ropes and had both of these motherfuckers in jail in 45 minutes flat, seven years old. I'm not making this up. These two crackheads kidnapped her and took her back to the crack house and tied her up. And then they left her. They said, crackheads, they got to make moves. Crack, smoke, chocolate to eat. These motherfuckers made moves. It was out. But as soon as they left, this little girl got the nibbling. She was kidnapped at 4 o'clock and at home watching herself on the news at 5.30. That shit is crazy. That's a, that's a news story. That is a news story. Now, meanwhile, in Utah, 15-year-old Elizabeth Smart's captors left her alone, too. And they didn't even tie her up because they're hillbillies. They just bounced. Don't try to escape, bitch, or we'll kill you. Be right back. And leave. And she's 15 sitting in the house by herself. How am I going to get out of this? <laughs> Come on, Elizabeth, think. Think, Elizabeth, how am I going to get out of here? Why don't you just open the fucking door and go outside? Have you thought about that? Do you have a quarter? Do you know your phone number? You're 15, bitch, run. Stop thinking and stop making moves. I know I sound mean, and I know what the people are thinking when I'm saying this. Dave, she is only 15. All right, but that's the discrepancy, because when you talk about a little girl like Elizabeth Smart, then the country feels like 15 is so young and so innocent. <laughs> On the flip side, here comes 15 again. Now we're talking about a 15-year-old black kid in Florida. This black kid accidentally killed his neighbor when he's practicing wrestling moves that he saw on TV. Now, was he a kid? No. They gave him life. They always try our 15-year-olds as adults. The snigger knew what he was doing. It's a goddamn pile driver. If this kid gets on the ropes, there's no stopping him. You'd have to send the rock to arrest him. And they gave a 15-year-old boy 
life in jail. It's okay to give him life in jail, then it should be legal to pee on him. That's all I'm saying. You gotta make up your mind across the board how old 15 actually is. That's all I'm saying. So I'm gonna tell you right now, if somebody comes in here and puts a gun in my head and says, Chappelle, you got a choice to make. You're either going to jail for a month or we'll let you go, but you gotta let R. Kelly pee on you. <laughs> I'm not hesitating. Bring in R. Kelly and tell him to stay away from my eyes. I'd rather get pissed on on the outside than fucking the butt on the inside, so. I can't go to jail with some smooth Botox balls and think everything's gonna be all right. It's not that kind of place. Take my chance with that piss. Piss will wash off with a 10-minute shower, I'm certain of it. This piss coming right out. What can I do? They're gonna put me in jail.